and its future uncertain. We will not sit quietly and allow others to determine our fate. As sea levels rise, Pacific leaders today launching a new report which finds three wealthy countries, Australia, Canada and the UK, have been responsible for more than 60% of emissions generated by new coal and gas projects in the Commonwealth since 1990. Tuvalu's Prime Minister Faleti Teo has signed a landmark pact with Canberra, but says if the federal government doesn't phase out fossil fuel exports, the future looks grim. To put it uh, plainly, it is a uh, death uh, sentence, uh, <coughs> not uh, uh, phrases that I use lightly. All of us have to respond on climate, all major economies in particular. King Charles also keen to highlight dire climate threats visiting mangroves which guard against coastal erosion and being granted the honour of a chiefly title. Anthony Albanese landed this afternoon in Samoa in driving rain. Another reminder of how quickly the weather can shift here and how vulnerable the region is to even small climate shifts. He could face some hard questions on fossil fuels and on climate finance. But the Prime Minister will also want to remind Australians of the progress the government's made, building deeper security and strategic links with the region. Like a new Pacific police support group encouraged by Australia with an eye on China. Officers from across the region now hitting Samoa's streets for its first ever deployment, providing security for Chogham. But security threats take many shapes. Stephen Jedgett's ABC News, Apia.